So let's take a look at this functions and graphs question from the Junior Start Higher Level 2012 Paper 1. So it's a question about quadratic functions. We're given that a group of four students is studying graphs of functions in the form f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus k, where x is a real number. Each of the four students took a different integer value for k and draws the graph of their function in a suitable domain. Maria took k to be minus 8 and drew this graph here. So the A part asks us to use the graph to write down the roots of the equation x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So Maria's function x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0, that's represented by this curve on the right hand side here. So to find the roots of the function using the graph, we simply find the x values where the curve crosses the x-axis. And so in this case, the roots are x equals 2 and x equals minus 4. Now an alternate method to find the roots, though we wouldn't be allowed to do it in this case because it does say use the graph, would be to solve the quadratic equation. So if we factorize this quadratic, x plus 4 on x minus 2 equals 0, we let each bracket equal 0, so x plus 4 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0, we get x is equal to minus 4 and x equals to 2. The B part of the question says that Keith's graph passes through the point 3, 2, find the value of k that Keith used. So the first thing to notice is that the point 3, 2 doesn't pass through Maria's graph. So Keith's graph obviously looks different than Maria's graph. So Keith's graph is based again on x squared plus 2x plus k. And so looks something more similar to this, passing through the point 3, 2, which is here. So as the point 3, 2 is a point on the curve, we know that when the x value is 3, the y value or the f of x value is 2. So we're going to sub 3 in for x and let the whole thing equal to 2. So we have f of x, 2, is equal to x squared, which is now 3 squared, plus 2 by x, which is now 2 by 3, plus k. And we can use this to solve for k. The next line reads 2 equals 9 plus 6 plus k. We'll subtract a 9 and a 6 from both sides to give us 2 minus 9 minus 6 equals k. So k is equal to minus 13. And Keith's function, therefore, is f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 13. In the C part, we're told that on Alice's graph, the two roots of the function are the same, and we want to find the value of k that Alice used. If a quadratic has equal roots, it means that the factorization of that quadratic would have equal factors. So if we attempt the factorization of Alice's function, we have two sets of brackets, and we know that the first term in each bracket multiplies to give x squared, so it must be x times x. We don't know what the last term in each bracket is, but because the roots are equal, the factors are equal, and so we know that the last term in each bracket is the same. We'll call it t. So let the factorization be x plus t and x plus t. We can see that if we multiply the first term in each bracket, we'll get x squared. The rule is that if I multiply the last term in each bracket, t times t, that will give me the k, so t squared is equal to k. And we also know that the sum of the product of the inner terms and the product of the outer terms gives me 2x. So the product of the inner terms is tx, and the product of the outer terms is tx, and the sum tx plus tx equals 2x. That means that 2tx is equal to 2x and therefore t must be the number 1. If t is the number 1 and we know that t squared is equal to k, we can say that k is equal to 1 squared and therefore k is equal to 1. If we want to finish it in a slightly different way, we could take our value of t equals to 1 and put it back into the factorization of the function, so x plus 1 times x plus 1. We'll expand the brackets by opening the first one and multiplying it by each term in the second one. If we multiply it out, we get x squared plus x plus x plus 1. And then finally, tidying it up, we get x squared plus x plus x is 2x plus 1. And so doing it this way, we can also see that the term independent of x is equal to 1, and therefore k is equal to 1. The D part of the question asks us to draw a sketch of Alice's function on the diagram shown in part A. 
So Alice's function is now f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. So to accurately draw this, we're going to find the roots of the equation so that we can see where it touches the x-axis. And we're going to find where it cuts the y-axis. And if needed, we'll find some extra points to make sure that the graph has greater accuracy. So to find the roots of the equation, we factorize it once again. So we have x plus 1 on x plus 1 is equal to 0 which means that x equals minus 1. We can see the equal roots here, which means that it touches the x-axis at the point minus 1, 0. So the curve comes down with the same shape as Maria's, and once it touches the point minus 1, 0, it starts going back up in a symmetrical manner. In a quadratic function, the term independent of x, in this case the 1, that gives the y value where the curve cuts the y-axis. So this curve cuts the y-axis at the point 0, 1. So we have two points of the function, and because the question does say to just sketch the curve, we could just draw our u-shaped curve now down through minus 1, 0, and up through 0, 1. But let's find a couple of extra points using table mode on the calculator to ensure that the graph is accurate. So we enter the function into the calculator. We'll start with an x-value of minus 3. We'll end with an x-value of 1, and our step will be 1. And we can see that minus 3, 4 is another point on our curve. We have minus 2, 1 is a point on our curve. We know that minus 1, 0 and 0, 1 are points on our curve. And also 1, 4 would be a point on our curve. Now we could find extra points. The values of y for x equals minus 5, x equals minus 4, x equals 2 and x equals 3. But we have a fair idea now at the shape of the curve. And so if we connect up the points we can see the curve has the same shape as Maria's, but just positioned higher up on the graph. In part D of the question, we're told that Emma's graph shows that the roots of her function are minus 5 and 3. Find the value of k that she used. So to form a quadratic equation given the roots, it's useful to learn the formula f of x is equal to x squared minus the sum of the roots x plus the product of the roots. Emma's roots are minus 5 and 3, and so if we sub these into this equation, we get that Emma's function for her quadratic would be x squared minus the sum of the roots minus 5 plus 3, x, plus the product of the roots minus 5 times 3. If we tidy that up, we get x squared minus, minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2, x, and minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. And finally, we get f of x is equal to x squared minus multiplied by a minus is a plus 2x, minus 15. And we can see in Emma's function that her k value is minus 15. An alternate method to do this question without using the formula would be to take Emma's roots, x equals minus 5 and x equals 3, and turn them back into factors to try and form the quadratic. So f of x would be x plus 5 times x minus 3. If we multiply out the brackets, we have x on x minus 3 plus 5 on x minus 3, which gives us x by x is x squared, x times minus 3 is minus 3x, 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times minus 3 is minus 15. And if we simplify the x terms, we have x squared minus 3x plus 5x is 2x minus 15. And so as before, we can see that Emma's k value is equal to minus 15.